Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to try to find the length of a single arc of a cycloid. Notice that the distance from the origin to where the cycloid hits the x-axis, this distance here is 2 pi r, so the length of the arc should be something greater than 2 pi r, just as a reference. The equations defining the cycloid are defined by y equals r times 1 minus the cosine of t and x equals r times t minus the sine of t. T, of course, is the variable that describes the angle of a rotating circle, and the cycloid is made by having the edge of that circle rotate around the wheel as it makes one complete turn. It then, of course, makes that cycloid. To find the length, that can be defined by 0 to 2 pi of the integral of 1 plus dy dx quantity squared times dx, which is the length of a curve, and that's how we find that length. But since dy dx are going to be uh, defined in terms of uh, the parametric uh, equations, what we need to do here is find dy dx. So dy dx is defined as dy dt divided by dx dt. So this is equal to the derivative of this with respect to t gives us r times the derivative of cosine is the negative sine that cancels out the negative, gives us the sine of t divided by the denominator, the x dt will be r times 1 minus the cosine of t. Notice that the r's cancel out, so dy dt can be defined in terms of this fraction. Now we're ready to find the length. So the length is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the radical 1 plus dy dx quantity squared, which is sine squared of t, divided by 1 minus the cosine of t quantity squared, times dx. Now dx can be defined by taking the differential of this, so dx is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine of t times dt. By taking the dx dt, move the dt there, and so there's our differential dx, which can then be plugged in here, instead of the dx, which is r times 1 minus the cosine of t dt. Okay, so now we have the differential in terms of t, all the variables are in terms of t, now how do we simplify that? We're going to take the r, put it in front, and the 1 minus cosine of t, let's multiply that into the radical. So that gives us the length is equal to r times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 1 minus the cosine of t quantity squared. So when we bring that in, we have to square it. It'll cancel out the second term, what's in the denominator, so we end up with plus the sine square of t times dt. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and multiply this out. So the length is equal to r times integral from 0 to 2 pi, the following, the square root of 1 minus 2 times the cosine of t, and then plus the cosine of squared of t plus the sine squared of t times dt. Uh, things are starting to look a little bit better now because the cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. We can add that to here, so that becomes L is equal to R times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 2 minus 2 times the cosine of t times dt. So now we need to use an identity. Because if I factor out a 2 here, I end up with 1 minus the cosine of t. And I know that um, the sine square of t can be written as 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2t. Oop. Go ahead, put that as 2t right there. Okay. If I factor out a 2, I end up with this. So this is equal to r times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 2 times 1 minus the cosine of t times dt. So I'm very close. So what I can do is I'll make this the cosine of t. I divide this by 2, then I have to divide this by 2. So this gives me the sine square of t over 2 
is equal to one half times one minus the cosine of t, like this. And if I bring the two over to this side, I can see that one minus the cosine of t can be written as this. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So L is equal to R times the integral from 0 to 2 pi times the square root of 2 times, and instead of 1 minus the cosine of t, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write 2 times the sine squared of t over 2 times dt. Now you can see that I have 2 times 2, which is 4. Take the square root, that is 2. And here, the sine square, take the square root, we get the sine. So this can be written as r times uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2 times the sine of t over 2 times dt. Now the only thing left to do is, since I have the sine of a half angle, t over 2, I will need a 1 half dt there. I will need a 1 half, and of course if I multiply times 1 half, I have to multiply times 2 as well. So I'll put a 2 here to negate to 1 half. Now I'm ready to integrate. So this can now be written as L is equal to 2R times, oh, let's see, this 2 can go to the front, so let's make that a 4R. 4R because 2 times 2 is 4. The integral of the sine of t over 2, well, the derivative of the sine is a cosine, so the integral of the sine is a negative cosine, so that would be the negative cosine of t over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. So now all I have to do is plug in my limits and see what I get. So I'm going to take the negative out front. So this is equal to minus 4 times r times. I'm going to plug in. So I'm going to go take this negative here and put it in front. So now I take the cosine of t over 2, but t now becomes 2 pi. So the cosine of 2 pi over 2 is pi, and the cosine of pi is a negative 1. Minus, when I plug in the lower limit, the cosine of 0 is 1. So here you can see that the negatives cancel out because I have a minus 4r times a minus 2, which is equal to 8r. And so that would then be the length, and that should be an r right there. There we go. So that is the length of one single arch of a cycloid, which should be bigger than 2 pi r. Now 2 pi is about 6.28, and so 8r is bigger than 6.28r. So it looks like it's reasonable, a reasonable answer. That should be the length of a single arch of a cycloid, and that's how it's done.